intra abdominal umbilical vein varies varicose dilatation of umbilical vein is a rare situation that makes up about 4% of all umbilical cord malformations and in the literature to date only around 100 cases have been reported the types of varic have been classified according to the location the most commonly observed are the extra abdominal the second type being intra abdominal of which intra hepatic ones are the rarest we here report two cases one had the rare form of intra abdominal intra hepatic umbilical vein varic and this was associated with dysgenesis of corpus callosum another case of intra abdominal extra hepatic umbilical vein varic was seen a 38 year old b1 t0 k patient came directly for a normally scan the first trimester scan was not performed term child was delivered no clinical features of trisomy 21 were noted in pregnancy on gray scale focal dilatation of the intrahepatic umbilical vein was seen measuring approximately 36 by 42 mm color and pa doppler showed continuous venous flow with turbulence the right and left portal branches and ductus venosus showed normal flow and no apparent thrombosis was seen antenatally thin out genu and anterior body of corpus callosum was seen with non visualization of the splenium suggestive of partial agenesis of corpus callosum this was associated with mild colpocephaly and irregular contour of the lateral ventricle the pericallosal artery was seen following the anterior part of the corpus callosum but its normal course in the posterior part was lost at the level of splenium the artery moved in an upward and posterior oblique direction on postnatal day 3 follow up near to complete thrombus of the umbilical vein varic was seen a small thrombus was also seen in the left and main portal vein partially occluding the lumen based on these findings patient was started on lmwh postnatal day 15 revealed consistent findings However, the splenium of corpus callosum was seen on NSG, which appeared thinned out, ruling out partial agenesis. And antenatal findings of this plastic genu and body of corpus callosum were confirmed, and this was finally suggestive of this plastic corpus callosum. Follow-up scan done on postnatal day three thirty outside revealed total recanalization of the previously seen portal vein thrombus. Case number two, a 28-year-old G1 T0 patient came for anomaly scan. The first trimester scan was not performed. The patient had no history of diabetes, hypertension, asthma, or thyroid disorder. No markers for aneuploidy were present. Patient is 35 weeks zero days gestational age at present. Not yet delivered. gray scale and color doppler image showing extra hepatic intra abdominal umbilical vein varic which was seen just superior to the urinary bladder follow up scan done after 5 weeks revealed no significant interval change no obvious thrombosis was seen and the ductus venosus showed normal color flow anatomy the umbilical vein enters the fetal abdomen within the falciform ligament and ascends steeply towards the liver along its inferior surface the umbilical vein then joins a confluence of vessels termed the portal sinus the portal sinus is a vascular space and is a conglomeration of structures including the intrahepatic portal vein which is made up of the left and the right portal vein the extrahepatic portal vein comprising the splenic and superior mesenteric vein and the ductus venosus the ductus venosus originates from the superior aspect of the portal sinus it then bypasses the liver and shunts blood into the heart of the fetus directly after birth umbilical vein and ductus venosus regress this is a cross sectional image of the fetal abdomen at the level of liver showing the anatomy of umbilical vein and portal sinus the diagnostic criteria are as follows the diameter of umbilical vein increases linearly with gestational age and the diagnosis is made when the diameter is more than two standard deviations 
Other criterias include umbilical vein diameter more than 9 mm at term gestation, umbilical vein diameter more than 50% of its non-dilated portion, and umbilical vein diameter more than 1.5 times its intrahepatic portion. The clinical impact depends on the gestational age at detection, with the varices detected before 26 weeks carrying a word prognosis. The complications include aneurysm rupture, thrombosis, heart failure, and compression of the umbilical artery or the neighboring structure. A meta-analysis of 218 cases was conducted and the results were as follows. Around 170 cases had normal outcome. Obstetric complications were seen in 42 cases of which 15 had oligohydramna, 8 had gestational diabetes mellitus, 4 had IUGR, 3 patients of preeclampsia were seen, placenta previa, preterm delivery and polyhydrominoes were seen in 2 cases each. Major malformations were observed in 17 cases of which the urogenital system was involved in 4 cases. Isolated cardiac defects were seen in 3 cases and hydroxypitalis and non lethal skeletal dysplasia were seen in two cases each. Minor ultrasound abnormalities were noted in 17 cases, of which the most common were CNN, which was involved in three cases. Bilateral moderate pilectasis, cryptorchidism, and single umbilical artery were seen in two cases each. Chromosomal abnormalities were seen in six cases, of which five had trisomy 21. Intrauterine demise was seen in seven cases. The results of the meta analysis are as follows. Detection of FIU calls for careful screening. Monitoring for growth is required. In the absence of malformations, usually the prognosis is favorable. And fetal karyotyping needs to be offered only if there are other abnormalities observed on ultrasound. Take home message. This plastic corpus callosum was a normal finding that has not been reported previously. Wait and watch policy should be adopted. Continuous thrombosis has also been documented previously, and close monitoring is advisable before any urgent interventional management. And LNWH proved to be an excellent treatment option for thrombolysis of umbilical vein varicose. These are my references. Thank you.